This is a video about the painting of Tarek Saduma. Part one. Tarek destroys me. <laughs> Part two, Tarek rapes my painting. Uh, I am Tarek Saduma, and that is the studio of Paul Talk. In we go. <laughs> I, Tarek Seduma, I will rape the painting of Paul Talk. Look at this ridiculous, outdated, white, western image of a female. Green, for a very special reason. Green is the color we need. Watch. The Green Triangle. Part 3. What I have already said about Tarek's paintings. This is a painting by Tarek, and it impresses me a lot. It's full of terrific things. He, he's, he's working on a, on a pretty high level there. But why the weirdness? That's the question, why the weirdness? That's what I call the Green Triangle. You add in the goofy thing to show that you're hip, you're with it, you understand. It's the good housekeeping seal of contempt for the past. It's ultimately a sign of capitulation, a sign of weakness. It's an act of artistic collaboration. Collaboration with the Academy of the Avant-Garde, which is an evil setup. I don't want to psychologized Tarek. He's obviously a very sensitive guy. This other painting, it's a painting that in a certain respect is full of beauty. It reminds me very much of Gustin, a, a painting like this. But again, there, there's something conformist about it. You know, why, if you have a capacity to enter the garden of beauty, do you then play those games. I mean, I can understand doing it from time to time for a reason. The, the greatest artists have indulged in grotesqueries and so on, and some of them made quite a business of it. Say, uh, Bush. But Bush painted monsters, but he painted deliciousness, beauty, and tranquility. I've been to the Prado once, and when I walked into the room with the bush, I, I was surprised because I, I, I knew all the paintings because my, my parents gave me a big book of bush, big fat thing, and I knew all the images. But when I walked into that room, I was completely surprised by the happiness of it. The general impression was just happiness. You, you felt like singing and dancing. and it, It's not like there's anything wrong with weirdness. I mean, Jan Stein celebrating drunkenness and debauchery in a way. But yet, there's always something else there. It's not like something wrong with, with, with this kind of thing as such, but it has its place. It's neither the whole of the thing, nor should it be a sign of something... Shameful. Part 4. What Tarek has already said about painting. Nederland weet al heel lang dat kunst over perceptie gaat. En wij hebben ook een hele grote ontwikkeling doorgemaakt waarin onze genieën, kunstgenieën, na honderden jaren zijn komen boven. Het is wat datgene wat je niet direct uit kunt drukken in woorden, waarbij je naar een schilderij moet kijken dat je elke keer weer, als je voor een Van Gogh staat of voor Rembrandt staat of voor andere grote Nederlandse schilder, oh ja. When I hear the Kirak people talking like this, I am struck by how Dutch they look. Tarek looks so Dutch. Met name hier, want wij hebben natuurlijk al uh, dat allemaal doorgelopen. En... Dus waarom zouden we dan opeens weer moeten doen alsof we niet weten wat kunst is? Part 5. Is Tarek an Islamic artist? God himself created the world, making fake things 
copying what God did is an impiety. Man is not God, and he shouldn't play at being God. And for that reason, since the dawn of Islam, it has been forbidden to make graven images, certainly not to make pictures of God, but not even to picture men who are created in the image of God, and not even really to make pictures of nature, because that too is God's creation. But what is reluctantly allowed in Islam is to make beautiful designs that only man could make, very simple or eventually very complicated geometrical things, sometimes more or less influenced by nature, but usually involving straight lines, and eventually the curved lines of writing, the writing always being words from scripture. So paintings of people, particularly very realistic paintings, in a word, painting about perception, is not Islamic. Does Tariq make paintings of geometrical patterns? Does he have Arabic scripture from the Quran in his paintings? I don't think so. Tariq is a Western artist. He's a white Western Dutch painter. Part six. Let's talk for a minute about the problem of art and responsibility. Waar dat in godsnaam toch vandaan komt inderdaad, dat wantrouwen jegens kunst. Zo iemand als Plater die dat dan ook heeft, die zegt, omdat kunst eigenlijk misleidt, is het niet te vertrouwen. Waardoor je ook de hypothetische stelling krijgt dat een goede kunst niet zou misleiden. Plato was himself an artist. And his hero, his main character, was condemned by the city and put to death. Socrates, of course, is famous for his irony. Socrates is a character created by Plato. The work of Plato is ironic. The Republic is an ironic work. It's a book in which Plato grapples with the problem of justice. He tries in speech to construct a perfectly just city. Why a city? Why not just define justice in the abstract? Well, imagine a person all alone. There's no question of justice. Justice is about our interactions with other people. So to get at the essence of justice, you have to see what it is in the city. The result is an impossible absurdity. One of the ways in which the final city in the Republic, the just city, is absurd and impossible is that artists have to be excluded from it. That is absurd and impossible because Things like art are part of what it is to be human. And a city that excludes what it is to be human may be just, but it's absurd and impossible. Something that's not going to happen. Art can be socially responsible. It can even be patriotic. It can even be a strong contributor to good social order. But it can also do things that are important, but that are perturbing to social order. And it can also be completely irresponsible. And you can't have a perfect system where everything's going to work out and everything's going to be just, where everything's going to be equal, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, if you have perturbing influences. There's a great illustration of this today with wokeness. Wokeness is trying to make everything nice. And so they are restricting free speech because it insults people, it upsets people. Does that mean that because we live in a free society, it's not a problem if we rush around doing perturbing things? I'm bringing this up because in my last video about creeps from the Middle East, I brought this question up to Sina and especially to Tarek, challenging them to reflect on the responsibility of 
making so-called art out of Muslim violence against women in particular at this juncture of our civilizational adventure, whether that is an appropriate subject for comedy. I'll be frank and straightforward about this. I don't think that what they've done in Creeps from the Middle East is funny or responsible. I don't think it's a crime against humanity. I don't think it's a disaster. I just think that it crosses the line of responsibility. I just don't see where there's any value added. I don't see how it's more than a sophomoric effort to be edgy. They've got to get some real comedy into it so that, you know, so that somehow it elevates it or something is transcended. It just seems a little bit, a little bit cheap and dirty. I wouldn't bother saying this if I didn't like Cena and Tarek. But I do like them, so I'm saying it. Part 7. Tarek's painting of Michel Welbeck. Here's a little glimpse of Tarek in his studio, and you can see that painting behind him. It's a very, very big painting. Let's keep in mind that it's very, very large, and also, apparently, Tarek feels that it's not finished, but I'm not worried about that. Paintings are never finished. They're just abandoned. Here's the painting. It's seven or eight feet tall, and it is a very striking portrait of the hideous Michel Welbeck. Michel Welbeck is an evil person. In his book, Submission, he imagines France slipping into a Muslim-dominated society, and eventually there's this Muslim president. And the main character is a sort of semi-self-portrait of Welbeck himself, who slips into collaborating with this new system, and as a result, he gets a very big salary and gets to marry four young wives. In real life, Welbeck has a much younger Chinese wife who arranges sex tourism for him, so he runs around the world having sexual adventures. And this is just pure corruption. Is he a great artist? Well, you know, people are very excited about his work today. But if you're like I am and you've read the great authors, the great American, English, Russian, French, etc. authors, well, you know, you know, he's, he's, he's not a bad writer. It's okay. And he's got some interesting ideas. But, you know, it's uh, Michel Welbeck is not a great artist. And, and they've made a big deal about him. You know, in France, they give him art shows. He takes photographs or something. You know, so he's just, uh, you know, a kind of a god. And he thinks of himself as a god. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And his way of dealing with uh, with Kirak is a perfect example. I mean, I, I won't detail that. If you don't know about it, you can find out about it. But it's just absolutely disgusting how he behaves. And how he slanders people and tries to stop people from slandering him. And now, anyway, French society has decided that he's some kind of a fascist. And so he's been cut out. But still, on the, on the world stage, he's still some kind of uh, a great artist hero. You know, I'm not impressed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying he's just a terrible artist. You, you can be an evil person and be a good artist. I mean, Hitler wasn't such a bad painter, you know. And Caravaggio was a murderer. Anyway, Welbeck is an evil person. He's an artist. He's not, you know, the great, great artist that they make him out. But, okay, he's an artist. But he's an evil person. And I think that Tarek's portrait of him, which is obviously, uh, you know, worked from a photograph, 
And it's, it's more than just a copy of a photograph, obviously, but it, it is that to begin with. And it brings out Welbeck's evil. This painting is an admirable work. However, it is not true painting because it is too illustrative. I'll explain that. And it is somewhat evil in the sense of it being evil art. Now that's a term of my own coinage and I will also explain what I mean. Now, Tarek has a way with color. In all his paintings he's got a way with color. In that sense he's like Geo, and both of them have a relationship to color which includes a sense of how color represents light and, and things. So while the color of this painting is, is kind of luscious, it, it, it's luscious in a way, the colors are, are, are there illustratively. And what that means is that they're, they're, they're there to represent. There is not, I mean, you know, the, I'm sure that the surface of this painting is beautiful and so on, but th there's nothing compositional about it. It's this fabulous representation. You know, it reminds me of Chuck Close. Chuck Close is a painter who was an abstract expressionist and changed over to a kind of pop art in the 60s. He may, maybe he's still alive. He makes these gigantic portrait paintings, these heads. Always, of course, based on photographs. It was one of the phases of photorealism. And his color can have a similar kind of lusciousness that you find in Tarek's paintings. Another way to get a line on this is to look at the Coca-Cola Santa Claus. Again, the color is luscious, but it's all there to give an impression. It's an impression that doesn't really have to do with painting in the true painting sense, 19th century term, by the way, but just has to do with making a very convincing, illusionistic, sometimes a stylized illusion, illusion, but still illusionistic thing. This is a huge subject, so I'm not going to try to go into it too deeply. But, you know, what's an example of true painting that might relate to this kind of thing? Well, Jacques-Emile Blanche, for instance. And here you have something where the paint and the color is doing more than giving us this fabulous illusion. There's a wonderful illusion, but the, the paint is there sort of by itself. The color is there as color, and it's doing things in the painting. And it's doing things like making areas of light that have spatial implications and areas of light and dark and different colors and so on. I, I talk about this in detail in my in my book and in many videos. But Tarek's painting, though the the colors are beautiful, they're and, and, and though sort of by accident they might do painting things, they're not put there with true painting intention. When I say true painting, I don't mean that his painting is false. I'm using it in the technical sense of the 19th century. In other words, that the decorative and the illustrative are working specifically together. It's, a, it's, it's illustrative painting from that point of view. One cannot say that it's photorealism. Parts of it are photorealism but other parts are not photorealism at all. Let's take a look at that. 
we have to keep in mind that we're only looking at a photograph here. So everything I say, there has to be some grains of salt because seeing the real thing might alter some of this. But, all right, I, I look at this part of the painting. And that must, you know, that thing on the right, that red thing must be at least a square foot in size. It looks to me like some kind of wound or some kind of disease, some kind of, you know, diseased flesh or tortured flesh or something really unpleasant and repulsive. Could it be a wound on Welbeck's head? It looks like it's bleeding out or some kind of strange thing. And then the thing on the left, you know, again, it's got that luscious color, that illustrative luscious color, but what's it representing? It's something disturbing. Is it a geode? Is it a piece of meat? What for? You know, the Welbeck's evil is conveyed beautifully in the painting just by his face. So is this supposed to represent, you know, God, I don't know, the, 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 his violations of, you know, does it represent something? Does it represent anything? I don't know what it represents, but it's, it's disturbing. And part of what makes it particularly disturbing is the very lusciousness of how, of how it's painted. So, okay, from a, a, an artisanal point of view, I can admire it, but my human reaction to it is um, is not good. I know I, I, it's something I, I wish I hadn't seen. The way Tarek has painted Welbeck's mouth, just just that part of his face, you, you can see that you're dealing with something corrupt. But what's this thing under his chin? And what's the thing on the left? It sort of might be a shirt or that could be a fish or something. But it it all looks like rot. And maybe that's, you know, or, you know, you're laying it on really thick. <laughs> so, but, but, but again, it's, it's this mixture of lusciousness and repulsiveness and to me that's evil art you know it's art but it's evil it's 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 attractive in one way and it's repulsive in another way it has some beauties of form and color but morally it's it's uh, something you you want to run away from all right what is this all about? Uh, people might think I'm gratuitously picking on Tarek, but you've got to look at the positive things I say too. You know, I I I, re I respect Tarek's talent and his accomplishment. And I was I was helped a lot on my path to painting. I was helped by living people and the the work of non-living people and I've sort of in spite of myself slipped into also being an, a teacher and I, I feel myself part of the whole chain of painting you know call it the tradition call it but, but, but what what really is it? It's 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 dead people speaking to living people. It's it, it's a uh, it's a communion that is goes beyond the grave. <laughs> and I I feel a certain responsibility towards people like Tarek who who are who who could be important painters and in, in you know you, you you never know but he 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 seems to really have that potential and he also seems to be 
in a struggle with himself because he puts beauty into his paintings and then he deliberately puts ugliness into them. He puts he does disturbing things. Now the thing about all this disturbing stuff, it's you know it's like the business of uh, you know the the, the creeps uh, being bad with with women. Uh, it's it's cool, and you y- you get points for it. Well, you don't get points for it with me. You get points with me when you do something that's that's beautiful and poetic. Uh, 